All right, so uh, very first question, like I said, on your uh, test is going to be something like this. And we're just kind of looking at what values do we get. So if, if I look at the very first one, the limit as x approaches ne uh, one from the left, what would that be? So let me see, it's one, two, three, four, five here. So what's my limit of this function as I approach from the left? Okay, yeah, it's going to be 3, right? Uh, because it's coming in this way, right? So it's going to be at 3. What about from the right side? Just 1, right? Because it's coming in this way, and it's at 1. What is my whole limit then? D and E, right? Because they don't match. What is f of 1? It's 1, okay? f of 1 is this piece right here, okay? Uh, what's my limit as x it goes, as it goes to infinity? What is it trying to reach? So notice, infinity, it's going to be going this way, right? So it's going to positive infinity, right? What about as I'm going to negative infinity? So yeah, it's going to keep going left and down, right? So negative infinity. So this will be positive infinity. This will be negative infinity. Huh? No, as long as it's infinity, I know it's positive. But if it's negative, you better write negative. Yeah. Any questions on this? All right. Um, there'll be other questions that you guys have to be able to do, which are finding limits. So um, I'm just going to put right here limits. So part A, let's say I ask you to find the limit as, oh my gosh, really? What is it with this class that this thing always freezes? So um, I'm going to have you guys finding limits of just some random things like uh, the limit as x approaches, let's say, negative 2 of x squared plus 4x. Okay, so something like that. Um, the limit as x goes to, let's say, 1 of 1 over x minus 1. There might be some where you're going to have to factor first and break stuff down before you can plug stuff in. Okay, so maybe something like this. So let's say x squared. I want the bottom to be an x minus 4. So something like that. Let's see, factoring, factoring. I'm going to give you one hint. Um, you guys should know how to factor a cubic function, an easy cubic function, like x cubed minus 1 or x cubed plus 1. I mean, that's something you guys should have been taught in Algebra 2, okay, and reinforced in trig. Um, but if you don't remember, look for how to factor uh, a cubic function. Okay, how to factor a cubic. So uh, the sum of two cubics or the difference of two cubics. Um, so something like this. I'll just kind of write it up here. Okay, make sure you know how to factor those because one of the questions is going to have that and you got to factor it in order to do it. You don't need a calculator. You just need to be able to factor it right. Okay, it's just a formula. Uh, I think it's uh, for the minus, I think it's a minus b in a parenthesis, and then it, I think it's a squared minus 2ab, no, minus ab, no way, plus ab plus b squared, and then the other one, the plus one is a plus b, and then it's a squared minus ab plus b squared. Um, so yeah, just look them up. You, you can find them for sure. Um, yeah, so that's basically what you have to know for limits. Now, they are, there are six questions on limits. 
Um, I'm just kind of going over three of them. But for the first one, you're going you're gonna to try just the basic thing. Try plugging in the number and see if it works. Okay? So uh, if we plug it in, it's going to be negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2. So that's uh, 4 minus 8. So your limit's negative 4. Now if I try plugging in my next problem, um, what happens? I get division by zero. So I can't use direct substitution. So now you have two options. You can either decide to uh, graph this or you can decide to make a table. And that's up to you. Uh, your calculator can help you make a table really quick. There's a table function for it. Um, if you don't know how to use it, I can teach you how to do that. I don't know if I can get it done by today, but YouTube, right? YouTube, you can look at how to set up a table on a TI-84 or whatever. Um, but you can always look there. If not, I can always teach you guys later. Uh, or you can graph this. Now, graphing it would be my choice because this should be an easy graph for you guys. This is basically 1 over x, which is your reciprocal function. So it goes down and then on the other side. Okay, um, and then it's just shifted one time to the right. Okay, uh, curve sketching is something you guys were supposed to, they expect you already to know these things. Remember, uh, over here there's a parent function um, poster that you guys should take a picture of because those are all the ones I expect you to have memorized. Like when I say e to the 2x, you should be thinking, okay, that's kind of like this, just with the bigger amplitude. Uh, but but that should be that should be a lot uh, something I can do without looking at my calculator, right? Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to graph this. I'm just going to sketch it really quick, just right here on the side. So this looks like this. Oops, hold on. Here's my vertical asymptote. Okay, and this is one right here, okay? That's one. So what's the left limit going to, the left side? Negative infinity, what about the right side? Positive infinity, so the limit does not exist. Okay, notice it would have taken me a lot longer to make a chart. So if I can think of the picture, then it's a lot easier for me to do, okay? Uh, pictures are always preferred over charts. Um, for part C, uh, if you plug in a 4, you end up with 0 over 0, so that's not ideal. So you're going to want to try to see if there's something else you can do. Now, of course, you can graph it or you can, um, you can uh, create a table if you want to, but this is something I see as a difference of two squares. I know that it's going to be able to break down into x minus 4, x plus 4, so I can cancel stuff out. So let me uh, do that really quick. This will be x minus 4, x plus 4 over x minus 4. And I can cancel. So limit as x goes to 4 of x plus 4 can now be uh, plugged into. So 4 plus 4 gives me 8. Now, I want to make sure you guys notice, I'm not writing this as my answer. I see a lot of people do this. They just keep writing the limit. Once you apply the limit, okay, once you apply the limit, so you plug in the 4, the actual limit portion disappears, and it's just going to be your numbers and letters that you're plugging into. So um, you don't need to keep writing limit, 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 limit over and over again. Okay, uh, you do at first, but once you do the direct substitution, you can drop it. Okay, any questions on these three? All right, so um, back of the test, I'm going to ask you for continuity at a point. So this one, let me see. Um, Continuity at a point. Now this is something you guys have to have memorized, okay? Make sure you have this memorized. There are three steps to checking for continuity at a point. 
does the point exist? That's step one. Does the limit exist at that point? And is the point existence the same as the limit existence? Like, are they the same value? Okay, those are three steps. So I got to create an f of x function. Uh huh. Sorry? Oh, the three steps. I'll, I'll walk you through them again right now. So let me see. I'm trying to think of. Um, for anything and then two so this is a very simple one because I'm just making something up I'm not trying to make it really complicated because uh, if I make it really complicated it may not work so better to make sure it works so there are three steps you have to do okay to check for continuity uh, usually they'll ask you uh, is this continuous at x equals zero, or they might say, uh, does x equal to zero have continuity or something, or is this function continuous at x equal to zero? So I'm just checking, is it continuous at x equal to zero? So first step, what it, is there a value for f of zero? So what's my value for f of 0? It's 2. Because they say when x is greater than or equal to 0, the value is 2. So all right, I got a value of 2. OK, second thing. What is the limit as x approaches 0 of our function? OK, now in order to do that, you're going to have to check left and right sided limits. Now you could graph this right here. I made this easy enough where I could just quickly graph it. So uh, the top part, x plus 2, uh, is going to look like this. But then the other part is just 2. It's a horizontal line. So I get to plug that hole, and it goes that way. There's my function. That's what it looks like. So, I mean, looking at the picture, is it continuous at 2? Uh, sorry, at 0? Yeah, I mean, you can see. I, 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 there was a hole, but I plugged it in with the other graph, right? So, it is continuous. But to prove it without a picture, you need three steps. Does the function have a value at that point? So, at 0, yes, it does. Does it have a limit? So, we got to check limit as x approaches 0 from the left. And the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. So from the left side, I can, I mean, you can do it one of two ways. You can either plug in 0 into your x plus 2. That's your left side, right? That's the less than portion. So you can just plug in a 0 into your function, or you can just look at the graph, right? Where does the limit want to go to? Two, right? Like this is one, two, three right here. So it wants to go to two. What about from the right side? Yeah, it wants to go to two. So does the uh, they both have limits of two? So does the limit exist? And the limit is so all right. So now for the third step, you have to show is it true that the limit as x approaches zero of f of x is actually f of zero? Well, yeah, the answer was 2 equals 2. So there you go. I just showed, I, I proved continuity. Okay, three steps. The point has to exist. The limit has to exist. And the point and the limit must have the same value. Any questions on this one? All right, um, finding vertical and horizontal asymptotes is going to be the next thing. All right, 
And uh, I'm just going to give you functions. So let's just say um, something like this. So if I gave you that and I asked you to find the uh, vertical asymptote, what would it be? X equal what? Seven, right? Because that's what makes the denominator zero. A seven, so x equals seven. Remember, your horizontal asymptote depends on your numerator and denominator, right? They're degrees. So the situation I have here is that they both have the same degree. So the answer would be their leading coefficients, right? So it would be one over one or just one. can do one more here. Um, g of x equal to x cubed plus 3x minus 2. I'll do an x squared minus 9. All right, so what are my vertical asymptotes for this one? Plus or minus 3, all right, so negative 3, positive 3. And my uh, horizontal asymptote? Yeah, the degrees aren't the same. Degree on top is higher. So what situation is that? None. Not zero, but none. Okay, it doesn't exist. Okay, now if the bottom was bigger in degree, then it would be zero, okay? It would be y equals zero. Are we okay with those? Any questions on anything so far? So we're going to the last part, which is uh, extremely simple. Um, but I know it still messes people up, but it's just one main idea. So we're good? All right, last one. Continuity. Not continuity at a point, but just basic continuity. Now, just to remind you, um, well, let me put this, let me put this instruction here. Are these continuous? Okay, that's basically what I'm going to ask you. Like, are these functions continuous? So if I do sine of x plus 3 sine of 2x, okay, is that continuous? Let me just check a couple other things. Um, g of x, we can do like x squared times x cubed minus 3x plus 5. And maybe we'll do one uh, h of x, which is x squared over x minus 2. So are these continuous? So these are the last questions that you guys have for your quiz. I think on the quiz I, I ask you, are they continuous, yes or no, okay? Now, just so you know, um, there is a, a note that I put for you guys um, in section 1.4, I think it was, right there in red. Trig functions, polynomial functions, rationals, and radical functions are continuous at every point within their domain, okay? So, that's what this question is about. What is the domain of sine of x? All reals. What about the domain of sine of 2x? Is that the same? Yeah, it's just a faster period, right? So, the domain is everything. So that means 
sine of x is continuous, that means 3 sine 2x is continuous. And if you add two continuous functions, we learned in section 1.4, I think that's where I put it. Um, if you add or subtract them, as long as they're continuous, they continue to be continuous, right? If you multiply them, they're still continuous. If you divide them, they're still continuous, given their domain, right? So this one would be yes. That is continuous because it's a continuous function plus another continuous function. What about uh, part B? Is that a yes or a no? Yeah, it's a polynomial times a polynomial. The, the domain of x squared, that's a parabola, is all real numbers. Okay, remember, it just keeps going like that forever, right? So it's all real numbers. The domain of a cubic function, or snake function as some people like to call it, that goes all the way down to negative infinity and infinity. So they both have infinite domains, right, everywhere. So if you multiply continuous functions, you should still get continuity. So this is yes. Now, what is the domain of x squared for h of x? All reals. What about x minus 2? Except for 2. two. And at 2, it's going to probably have a what? A hole or vertical asymptote, most likely, right? Vertical asymptote. So that's going to basically create discontinuity. Okay? Any asymptote is going to create discontinuity. Now, if I were to say um, where the domain is um, from negative infinity to negative 5, then you would say, yes, that is a continuous function because I didn't go all the way to 2, right? So I'd be okay. I could even uh, go up to, um, I could even do this that still would be continuous because 2 is not included, right? What you got to be careful with is when people do this because then you're like, oh, 4 is okay, but then you're not looking within the interval. There is a 2 inside that interval, and at 2, that fails, right? So you got to be careful. If they ever put domains, um, pay attention to the numbering. Find out what you can't use. And then, uh, based on that, uh, make your call. So...